Good day, everyone. My name is Teodora Raicu. I'm currently a master's degree student at the Kafoskari University of Venice. I study conservation science and technology for cultural heritage. This presentation shows actually the results of my bachelor's thesis I completed in Sibiu at the Lucian Blaga University under the guidance of assistant professors Cristina Maria Deneasa and Marta Julia Goodman. The Polychrome Wooden Cross was created in 1809 by Popayon Grigorevis Dugravul, the painter, who was a notorious artist in the Sibiu country. The purpose of the cross was to crown the iconostasis of the St. Basil the Great Orthodox Church in Fofelda village, Romania, which is located in the south of Transylvania. The image on the left shows the elements of the cross prior to any conservation or restoration treatment. Aesthetically speaking, it depicts the crucifixion and the four evangelists, namely Luke, Matthew, John, and Mark, who could be identified through the inscriptions written with Slavic Cyrillic characters that were present along the cross. The cross was made of two parts that were joined together through a half lap joint and fixed even further with canvas and with animal glue. Probably the painting technique is tempera, but more investigations must be carried out in order to be sure about the binder that was used. This image shows the dimensions of the cross, the horizontal part of it being 88 centimeters, while the vertical one is 117 centimeters. The condition of the wooden support was unfortunately far from optimal. The wood on the reverse was exposed to light, which caused the darkening of the wood. Also, the wood was decayed because it was exposed to a consistent biological attack by wood boring insects. After the cross was fixed together, after the two parts were actually fixed, the margins were painted red and maybe during that period the color from the margins got inside the joint and this is the degradation that we see here. Also, there were missing parts suggesting that the cross previously had a whole decoration around it. There was also delamination. There were also cracks due to fluctuations of relative humidity and temperature and traces of foreign materials that might have been lime from when the church was painted or they might have come from the ground layer. Due to the decay of the wooden support, the paint layer applied on it was also degraded. As we can see here, there was a loss of metallic leaf because of excessive cleanings that were done throughout the history of the object. Imprints, which meant that objects were pressed against the cross and that their shape remained embedded in the paint layer. There were losses of material because the wood was eaten by insect larvae. Also, there were delaminations, which meant that the paint layer was not lost, but it did not adhere to anything, so it was like in air. The varnish was applied unevenly, and also it got darker with time. And the cracks that were present on the reverse were visible also on the front, as we can see here. And in addition, we could see detachments of the paint layer. Moreover, there were dust deposits because the cross was not taken care of properly. So, what was there to be done since the cross was in a, such a precarious situation? Well, together with professors and other experts, it was decided not to use Paraloid B72, which is the common consolidation material used for this purpose. 
And the question is, why not? Because it is very, very difficult to remove it in the future because it does not consolidate uniformly. So maybe it will not penetrate every single hole in the crust. Also, because it is dissolved in toxic solvents. So what to do if we don't use Paraloid V72? Well, Pulsite WK was a viable solution. And why I'm saying that? Well, because it is easy to work with, it is a tested material agreed upon by the restorers. It has a texture that resembles that of the wood. Furthermore, it can be applied to the regions where it's needed the most. So you don't need to apply it everywhere, just where you really need it. Since proper care of the cross was not taken, the margins had a lot of missing parts. What was to be done with this? There were three viable options, the first two being depicted in the image. The first one was to cover the missing fragments with only a layer of balsite WK in order to prevent further cracks and other losses of wood. The second option was to reconstruct the lost parts using balsite WK. And the third option was to leave the missing parts as they were and only consolidate them locally with Paraloid B72. So in this case, for the front side margins, the Paraloid solution was chosen because a small amount of Paraloid was sufficient to locally consolidate the margins. To strengthen the support, the following operations were opted for. Since the paint layer was the most important to be conserved and it was entirely connected to the condition of the wooden support, the reconstruction of the losses of wood on the reverse side of the cross was necessary. To fulfill this step of the process, balsite WK was used. Then, rabbit skin glue was injected in order to consolidate the wood. Also, balsa wood was inserted in one of the longitudinal cracks in order to prevent a future fracture. And then, the local injection was done with Paraloid P72 in ethyl acetate just under the margins of the paint layer, as I mentioned in the previous slide. The very first step after writing the condition report of the object was to attach Japanese paper with sturgeon glue on the surface to fix the loose paint layer and to prevent further losses. For loosening up the wooden structure, denaturated ethyl alcohol was injected, which allowed animal glue to penetrate more easily inside the underneath the paint layer. Then, with the use of an electric spatula, the paint layer was pressed in order to re-adhere to the support. And in the end, the Japanese paper was removed with a cotton swab moistened with warm water. One of the problems that were encountered right after the removal of the Japanese paper was the absence of the smoothness of the paint layer because in some places where the support had been eaten away in a higher amount by the wood boring insect larvae, the surface of the paint layer became uneven. So, what to do in order to lift it up to its original level? Well, the method that was preferred consisted of the detachment of the paint layer, but very careful manual detachment to be able to recreate the paint layer smoothness after the insertion of pulsite. So, pulsite was inserted, and then, as in the case of a puzzle, the pieces were reattached all together. This was another advantage of using pulsite, since it acted as an adhesive as well. And in the end, all the fragments were pressed and left like this for one day.
And this is the result after cleaning the object. And this is how it looks like. I know it's a bit unconventional, but it was the best matter at hand. And it was carefully planned. And we consider the result quite satisfactory. From the very beginning, it was known that the cross will not be returned to the church to be used as an iconostasis cross, but that it will be displayed in a museum in Fofelda village. A proposal for a future display had to be thought about. And what was this proposal? Well, it dealt with the insertion of three bamboo sticks for each of the two parts that compose the cross, three for the vertical, three for the horizontal, and then in order to overlap the two parts correctly, half lap joints could have been created inside the bamboo sticks. And then, in order to display the cross properly, because vertically, since its mechanical resistance was poor, further degradation could happen that could lead also to fractures, it was decided to place the cross at a 45 degree angle which was better because this way, the way of the cross was dispersed better than vertically. This is the cross before restoration and this is the aspect of the cross after restoration. And as it can be seen, the missing fragments were kept as they were and they tell the story of the cross. They tell us that it went through a lot of events and it still survived and it still marvels us through its beauty. Popa Ioan Grigorievich, the painter, was an amazing artist, and this cross that was made at the end of his career stands as proof that he was a great artist till the end. I would especially like to thank to my two amazing professors, namely Cristina Maria Doniasa and Marta Julia Goodman, who supported me both with the restoration process and the scientific investigations, also, I would like to thank to the other contributors and to the members of the Restoration Committee that gave me advice and supported me all the way. And also, I would like to thank to my colleagues because there were some students who helped me too. I am very grateful for the opportunity of restoring such a wonderful object. I am also grateful to the organizers of this event for making the presentation of my work possible. Last, last but not least, thank you for your kind attention.